You know, normally we, uh, we particularly communicate risk to our patients who are primary prevention patients. They don't have known cardiovascular disease, but they have risk factors. And we calculate an estimated risk score uh, for the next 10 years, which would give them a percent risk for having a heart attack or a stroke in the next 10 years. That's called the ASCVD risk. It's a number. You know, you can express it as a frequency if they have, if the calculations when you plug in all of their risk factors that are required and some numbers like their cholesterol level and their blood pressure level and whether or not their blood pressure is treated, you come out with a, a percentage, but you can try and make that a little bit more, uh, more understandable for them. If their, per if their risk is 10% over the next 10 years, it sounds a little abstract. So you can say to them, out of, if, if there were 100 people just like you, the estimation is that 10 people over the next 10 years will have a heart attack or a stroke. Uh, with risk factors the same as you have. And you can also try and show them what ad uh, adopting certain behaviors, whether it's medication taking or quitting smoking, how that might reduce their risk. The other issue is there's a, a concept called numeracy, and that's one's ability to understand mathematical concepts. Not everyone has that ability to understand it well. So it, it, it can be difficult to, to patients to try and exactly understand what their risk might be. Uh, there are some organizations, for, exa for example, the Mayo Clinic has a kind of a pictograph of risk where there might be uh, 100 little figures and uh, if somebody has a 10% risk, 10% of them would be colored one way and the other 90%, other 90 of them would be colored another way to try and get them to understand. We also talk about um, obviously reducing risk and one of the ways, at least in my field, in preventive cardiology to reduce risk is to uh, recommend statin treatment to to people who have a certain risk score because statins have been shown time and time again to reduce cardiovascular disease risk, to reduce heart attacks, strokes, and deaths, even in people um, who are um, primary prevention kind of, kind of patients. With a pictograph like that, you can not only show them what the risk would be, uh, what their risk is currently, but if they adopted treatment, how many fewer individuals might go on to have a heart attack and a stroke. And there's, you know, the Mayo Clinic has an example of that on their website, and so I think that's, that's a, I had a slide of that, I think that's, that's a good example. But ultimately, it's the patient's decision. What I talked a lot about yesterday um, in my presentation was the notion of shared decision making. That we as providers can make a recommendation to patients about um, the best evidence we have available. And we can then have a discussion and then it's really up to the patient to deliberate based on their own healthcare concerns, their own values, the background that they, that they have to ultimately make that decision. It's really in their hands. You know, I just try and underscore the partnership between the clinician and the patient to try and help them reach the right decision. And we can only, you know, and we have to respect um, and perhaps support, you know, what, what their decision is because it's, you know, it, it is their life. But it's, it can be complicated, it can be overwhelming, and it's our job to try and, you know, help them with that and at least feed them with the appropriate education and come to them with a degree of compassion to help in this whole process. 
in the more serious conditions, people who have um, known heart disease, um, people who may have had a heart attack in the past, they may have had a stroke in the past, our clinical guidelines tell us that they really need to be in a, on a certain cocktail of medications, if you will. And the guidelines are very firm. Um, so I guess technically there's less shared decision making. We kind of approach it as a, um, as a stronger recommendation. But still, even with that, ultimately, it's the patients who will choose to take their medications or not take their medications. So I think we need to be very clear as to why we're making these recommendations, um, what the evidence is, be very clear that we don't want them to have another event, we don't want them to have another heart attack, another stroke, this is why, this is, you know, these are the reasons for the medications, but still, you know, there needs to be a discussion about this, and we need to be sure that, um, you know, that all their questions are answered, uh, and um, really try and help them through the, the, the thinking process and, and to feel comfortable with those decisions.